у філософському факультету Католицького університету у Буруженберку в Словаччині доктор Янг Хун і пан доктор у нас буде читати три лекції цього тижня, і це його перша лекція, присвячена сучасним питанням теодицеї. І також пан професор цікавиться сучасним богословієм, він захистив свою докторську дисертацію, присвячену такому відомому католицькому богослову сучасності, єзуїту Бернарду Лонергану. І я запрошую пана професора. Ми будемо працювати таким чином, що лекція відтриватиме приблизно годину, а потім будуть питання для обговорення. Також, хто спізнився, і що пізніше, то прошу собі брати такі короткі тези викладені, які вам допоможуть трохи зорієнтуватися в тексті. І розпочинаємо, прошу. Дякую, Олеся. Слава Ісусу Христу! Добрий день! Як ви? Я дуже радий, що то перебиваю в прекрасному університету ТТІ. Ми йдемо на українську мові або англійську. Я думаю, що ми всі, і мені, і ви, потрібно зберігати нашу англійську. Ми вирішили зберігати на англійську лекцію, окей? Дякую, Ореса, за гарну інвітацію і інтродукцію до моєї лекції. Якщо я правильно, я чув, що я вирішив дін. Я не вирішив дін вже. Я вирішив дін вже 8 років. І з 2016 я був вільний філософ на моєму університеті. Я вирішив філософію більше. Я вирішив вам вирішити мою вірю the problem of theodicy. Uh, theodicy, uh, you can uh, grasp or you can understand in two senses. In broader sense, uh, it means natural theology or uh, philosophical theology in general. You can, you can uh, read uh, books from 60s, from 70s, from Italian provenience, where people usually say, this is point of view from Theodicy, it means from natural theology. Theology which is based on rational reasoning, not uh, on scripture and doctrine. Theodicy in specific sense, or, uh, from, uh, uh, or in a narrow sense, from Leibniz, it means justification of God with respect to the existence of evil in the world. This is specific sense which I am going to talk about. Uh, that uh, term of Theodicy comes from Greek, and it means uh, two words, theos and dike. Theos means, you know, God, and dike, it's trial or judgment, or, and also it's a god of uh, happy, uh, lucky in, uh, in Greek mythology. Uh, I'm going to talk about one part of human experience. Whenever you live in Slovakia, or in Ukraine, Japan, China, or uh, South America, you will have experience with evil, with some kind of physical harm, pain, psychological harm, wars, violence, torture, disasters, meaningless of life. Many of these aspects uh, are described in many different cultures, religious traditions. Probably it's not possible to live our human life without experience of evil. Uh, and not just philosophers, I have a quotation uh, from one Czech magazine where 10 years old uh, uh, girl from Czech Republic uh, uh, send a, uh, send or, or wrote a letter to God and she wrote, Dear God, why are you letting die people and then you have to create a new one? Why don't you keep those who already live and why uh, why are you going to, to uh, letting uh, die people who create you, who, who you created? So also people in a very early age, kids, uh, could ask the question about the evil. Uh, and in philosophy there are significant lines, significant tradition of asking this question. Why uh, evil 
exists in uh, in the world. How to just and if you are theist, if you if you believe in God, you can ask how to justify God in the world that faces so many and so different kinds of evil. I will start with the end of the question: different kinds of evil. There are several typologies you can uh, divide or distingu distinguish uh, different kinds of evil, and I choose uh, this one, uh, which uh, consists in, of uh, three kinds: metaphysical evil, physical evil, and moral evil. Metaphysical usually is uh, understood as uh, evil, which is uh, which comes from universe, from principle. Uh, of the universe. For example, principle of um, uh, entropy in the universe. This is metaphysical evil. Something very uh, inner to our universe is collapsing, is, is, is bad. Uh, physical, physical evil, uh, everybody uh, know, uh, knows this uh, kind of evil. Pain, illness, suffering in very different types. And third one, moral evil. Unfortunately, also everybody of us have strong experience, at least from two aspects. I do, I did many, many things, I did many uh, moral imperfections, and also I am uh, I, I, I'm suffering from imperfection and from sins, from bad behavior of uh, people who uh, are around me. As I, as I mentioned, uh, the question about the uh, evil and God in this world is very old in philosophy. At least 2,300 uh, years, uh, philosophers put this question on the table and ask how it is possible to uh, how it is possible to reconcile reconcile uh, the good God on the one hand and the uh, uh, and the uh, evil existence of evil in our world. The maybe oldest uh, philosopher who can formulate this question in a very, very direct and um, fresh way is Epicurus. We uh, quite uh, quoted uh, this. Uh, we have quotation from Lactantius, and Epicurus uh, put these words: "God either wishes to take away evils and is unable, or he is able and is unwilling." Or he is neither willing nor able. Or he is both willing and able. If he is willing and able, he is feeble, which is not accordance with, uh, in accordance with the character of God. If he is able and unwilling, he is malicious, which is equally at variance with God. If he is neither willing nor able, he is both malicious and feeble, and therefore not God. And last option. If he is both willing and able, which is alone suitable for God, from what source then are evils? Or why does he not remove them? Epicurus formulated these, uh, these words uh, and started a big tradition of asking a question according, uh, concerning to the evil in our world. For Epicurus, uh, this attitude, this Questioning uh, didn't lead them to uh, lead him to uh, to uh, atheism. Rather, he proposed the idea of indifference. Maybe you heard uh, indifference attitude to the life. It means disinterest in between of evil in the world and divinity. People should, according to Epicurus, avoid worshiping of gods and live without fear, but also without desires. My favorite, uh, one of my favorite theologians, uh, Thomas Spidlick, uh, telling usually one, one story from Epicurus, uh, Epicurus' life. Epicurus uh, give advice to, to people around him. If you are uh, returning home from, from journey, from, from your business, don't, don't imagine happy family. Don't imagine your house, your wife, and your uh, son and, and uh, daughter. Rather, imagine that uh, house burned out, uh, your wife was, uh, was uh, I don't know what, 
your wife was uh, kidnapped, uh, your uh, daughter was uh, just uh, run out, and your son was killed by, by anybody. In this, in this uh, thinking, look at, in, in this thinking, in this imagine, uh, go to go to your home, and if you and if you see your home in fire, you can say just this, and then you 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 will have you will have a happy life. But who from us can live with this kind of attitude to life? It's Epicurus. Uh, Epicurus' advice to us is, is, is not suitable for life. It's, it's very poor life if I every time need to, need to imagine bad things and worse things in my life. Second, uh, ancient philosopher who put uh, important uh, words to the question is Sextus Empiricus. And uh, he was not Christian yet. And he, he wrote, he wrote it. Those who firmly maintain that God exists will be forced to impiety. Impiety means non-religious or um, uh, be against God. Uh, for if they say that he takes care of everything, they will be saying that God is, is the cause of evils. While if they say that he takes care of some things only or even of nothing, they will be forced to say that he is either malevolent or weak, and manifestly these are impious, impious uh, conclusions. This is second second um, um, contribution in ancient uh, discussion, and the goal is uh, very similar to uh, Epicurean uh, solution. Goal of this argumentation is to propose certain state of mind which uh, Greeks uh, called ataraxis, and it means calm and unworried life without useless and unfeasible desires. If you move out your desires, you can live your happy life. But who would like to move out desires? Desires are, are you know, engine of our imagination and of our life. And this practical implication probably nobody would like to follow. What is more important from this Greek discussion is formulation of very famous or so-called uh, basic fundamental state of problem and it is trilemma. Trilemma means that you put on the table three sentences and these three, sen three sentences you uh, have to reconcile or you have to uh, explain in a way uh, which is uh, welcome, which is uh, useful for your for your uh, theory. So, big uh, big trilemma concerning to theodicy. God is omnipotent. The first sentence: God is omnipotent, so all powerful, so He is able to prevent evil. Second, God is perfectly good, all good, uh, so He is willing to prevent every evil. And the third sentence, evil exists. The whole question of the theodicy is the effort to explain how could be these three statements compatible or coexisting. If God is both willing and able to prevent evil, then why does evil exist? You can you can uh, erase or you can say God isn't omnipotent. But this is a, in, a strong contradiction to the, our notion of God. You can say God is, isn't perfectly good. But it, this is not possible. We can imagine or we, we don't have a notion of God uh, who is not perfectly good. So, the last choice, we can say even that evil doesn't exist. Does evil exist? Have you ever experienced pain, harmful, meaningless of life? Have you heard about the torture, wars, you know? All three sentences are true and the philosophical problem is how to reconcile, 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 uh, reconcile them 
or how to explain how could be all three sentences uh, true. And uh, one more complication, a Marcion from Sinopa in a, uh, in a second century adds to the trilemma another sentence. And he asked, does God know about every, every particular evil which is in the, our world? If God isn't only science, then trilemma is solved. But if God knows about every evil, the trilemma still stays on the table and we need to solve it. After Christianity became uh, strong uh, and powerful in a uh, Western uh, philosophical tradition, uh, they, they were a uh, huge temptation, I can say. The temptation consists in a dualistic understanding of evil. Dualistic understanding of uh, evil or of the world means that there are two basic elements or principles in the world, goodness and evil, and these principles are like rivals and fighting in the world and in lives of people. But I would like to strongly uh, say that this is not Christian approach. Uh, dualistic approach is more typical in Hinduism or other East Asia religious traditions and in the be beginning of uh, or in patristic era it was some attempt to import dualistic approach to Christianity with Gnosa and Manichaeism Ma but uh, these attempts uh, are starting a big, big discussion within the Christian tradition and Augustine and Leibniz of course put their, they, uh, uh, their, their, uh, their theories to, to eliminate this dualistic approach. And last slide before I, uh, I will uh, move to, to philosophical solutions or philosophical theories, biblical root. If we are on the, uh, um, if we are in scope of Christian tradition, we need to take into the account also biblical, uh, biblical um, teaching or biblical, biblical uh, doctrine, biblical wisdom about the evil. But you know, Bible is a huge, a huge uh, book with many teachings and if you compare uh, teaching about the evil in uh, Torah with uh, teaching in uh, uh, a book of Wisdom or teaching in uh, St. Paul, uh, you, can, you can see uh, many differences, many, many, difference, um, many different uh, accents. But we can say that theological doctrine about the evil consists in a biblical view and the core principle is creation. Bible teach that, teaches that uh, creation is fundamentally good. And uh, creation gives to man freedom to decide for good or for evil. I think that this is one uh, crucial point from Bible. And second one, doctrine about salvation uh, is a basic incentive, basic uh, attitude of God's action toward to man. From Bible, at least the, uh, these two principles uh, we, can, we can grab to, uh, to see on the problem. And now move to the, to the philosophical doctrines, philosophical theories. How can uh, we solve or how can we see on the problem of, of evil in the world? So, first will be Irene or Irenaeus from Lyon. Uh, Irenaeus uh, uh, taught that man is created in basic natural situation. And this basic situation is opportunity to to every of us. Opportunity to create ourselves to be close to our God. The process of creation is not finished yet, uh, uh, according to, uh, to Irene. Uh, it is still in progress and we are part of that progress. Original nat natural situation is fight and egoism. But creator in intention with man by overcoming obstacles and temptations, removing his egoism and open up for impact of Holy Spirit. 
theological basis for this theory is uh, based on two, two, uh, two notions. Creation uh, like picture and creation like similitudo. Irene says that man created like picture, like imago, is uh, man in, her, in her, his or her human body, human form, physical nature. But we are invited to build ourselves, to rebuild ourselves, to similitude, to shape, which means spiritual improvement and uh, goal is spiritual nature of us. And uh, Irene or Ireneus uh, uh, has a doctrine about the body, soul, and spirit, and he he believes that perfection is in unity of these three three uh, elements. In contra Heresis, the famous uh, uh, work of Ireneus, uh, he mm, he wrote, but created things must be inferior to him, to God, who created them from the very fact of their later origin. Because as these things are of later date, so they are infantile. For as it certainly is in the power of a mother to give a strong food to her infant, but she does not to do so, as the child is not yet able to receive more substantial, nourish, uh, substantial nourishment, so also it was, in, uh, it was possible for God himself to have made a man perfect from the first, but man could not receive this perfection being as yet an infant. This is a very nice metaphor about the mother and her, uh, and her child. Evil, according to Irenaeus, uh, does not come into the world as outcome of penalization, but evil is part of a conditions that helps to man to improve himself or herself. And what is the goal of our life? Perfection of our soul, whole and perfection of whole human being. This was uh, Irenaeus and first big Christian theodicy. Second one, after 200 years, uh, is Augustine. Or Aurelius Augustine in Latin. I, I can say that Augustine uh, put on the table the most influential doctrine uh, from Christian thinkers. Uh, key concept of uh, Augustine is privatio boni. Privatio boni means absence of, absence of good. What, uh, what Augustine uh, wrote from, Holy, uh, on the, from the Tractate of the Holy Trinity Probably you don't have it in your handouts, but he wrote, For the Almighty God, who has even, who has even the uh, hidden knowledge, has supreme power over all things, being himself supreme good, good would never permit the, uh, the existence of anything evil among his works, if he were not so omnipotent and good that he can bring good even out of evil. For what is that which, call, which we call evil but the absence of God, good. In the bodies of animals, another metaphor, another uh, picture of, uh, from, from the nature. In the bodies of animals, disease and wounds mean nothing but absence of the health. For when a cure is effected, that does not mean that the evils which were present, namely the diseases and wounds, go away from the body and dwell elsewhere. They altogether cease, cease to exist. For the wound and disease is not a substance, but a defect in the fleshly substance, the flesh itself being a substance. And therefore, something good of which those evils, that is privations of uh, good which we can help, are excellence. And last sentence, just in the same way, what are called vices in the soul are nothing but privations of natural good. And when they are cured, they are not transferred elsewhere. When they cease to exist in healthy soul, uh, healthy soul they cannot exist anywhere else. So, 
the core teaching of Augustine is that evil is not a substance, which means that evil doesn't exist. But what does it mean, doesn't exist? It does mean that I'm, uh, I'm not affected by pain or affected by depression? No. Augustine uh, explained this by, uh, by very ontological terms. Uh, evil does not possess own substance, own essentia, therefore evil does not exist autonomously. Autonomously exist only good things, only good things from creation has uh, own substance, own essence. Ontological reality has only good things. Evil exists, if you can say it, only as an absence, and it means privatio boni, absence of some good. Augustine's solution is that he don't deny presence of evil in, our, in the world, but existence of evil. Evil, according to Augustine, again, is lack of required good. Privatio boni. Lack of required good. We can experience evil where we experience absence. Not substantia, not essentia, not real existing thing, but absence of something. Lack of good where it is should be. In Confessions, uh, Augustine wrote, and it was manifest it was manifested to me unto me that those things be good which yet are corrupted. If they shall be deprived of all good, they shall no longer be. So long therefore as they are, they are good. Therefore, whatever is, is good. That evil then which I saw whence it is, it is not any substance, for where it is, for where it a uh, substance, it should be good. Just think about that required good. What does it mean? Evil is not absence of, what, uh, of whatever good, but rather required good. So the good that belongs to the nature of somebody, to see, or to hear for people, but not to fly to people, but to the nature of birds is flying, and if birds uh, who usually uh, fly can't fly, it is uh, evil or something bad. But it's not bad for, for a human being, not fly. In, uh, another, um, in another book, The Libero Arbitrio, about the uh, free uh, decision, uh, Augustine uh, wrote, Therefore, a wanton will, uncompleted will, is the cause of all evils. If the, if the will were in accordance with nature, surely it, will, it would be maintain the nature and not be destructive of it. Hence, it would, be not, it, it, it would not be wanton, Accordingly, accordingly, we may conclude that the root of all evils is not being in accordance with nature. So, Augustine claims that free human beings, in accordance to biblical story or biblical teaching, free human beings is, a is able to decide against uh, his nature, his or her nature. World with moral free beings is better than without them. And God could not create free people and in the same time without possibility to commit sins. Maybe uh, you are aware of uh, consequences of this teaching of uh, St. Augustine. Uh, for him it means that God knew in advance that people will decide for evil. Anyway, he risked creating of free actors, free beings. Instead of determination, of, uh, instead of determination he proposed to people a way to correction of evil, grace. And through grace comes salvation and every single good. Uh, and last slide uh, concerning to Augustine. 
we can see in Augustine teaching also some aesthetic uh, explanation or, or a theory concerning to the evil. Uh, all evil or possibility of bad uh, decisions uh, improve aesthetic value of universe. Without them, the universe would be less interesting for us. Sinful man is, according to Augustine, better than sinless uh, stone. And we are moving to the last classical and big theodicy, uh, which is uh, um, produced by a German philosopher, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Okay. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz in the 17th century, between 17th and 18th century. Leibniz was uh, a big uh, mathematicians, mathematician, philosopher, maybe last uh, polyhistory in, uh, in Europe. And Leibniz, in the beginning of uh, 18th century, wrote a very famous uh, book, essay about theodicy, which is about the uh, goodness of God, uh, uh, liberty or freedom of uh, human, and origin of the sin, origin of the evil. And according to Leibniz, from Leibniz times, we know that, uh, that uh, term theodicy. Originally, Leibniz considered God's justice, but the term theodicy became synonym for a justification of God's action if he allows for uh, uh, evil in the, in the world. Uh, actually, Leibniz in his book reacts to Pierre Bayle, a famous French philosopher, because uh, Bale claimed that existence of evil weakens or make weak uh, confidence in God's goodness. And this provoked uh, Leibniz to, to reaction. Leibniz uh, uh, started from this point. The world is the best of possible worlds. Is the best of possible worlds. Significant and crucial Leibniz statement. He was strongly, in epistemology, he was strongly uh, rationalist, uh, rationalistic oriented, so he believed that theism could be pro proved uh, a priori, just a priori, not a posteriori. And this statement that world is the best of possible worlds is uh, very famous of uh, Leibniz. What does it mean? A posteriori, from our experience, from our everyday life, it's not possible to explain and justify why certain particular evil or goodness is part of the best possible world. It's not possible according to Leibniz. The world as whole is the best of all possible worlds. And evil is integral part of it. Integral part. Creating better world than, than our is not possible. If it is possible, God did it. But he didn't, so this is the best possible world. Who is God for Leibniz, from philosophy of Leibniz? God is highest, the highest wisdom and the highest goodness. So, the first two statements in Trilama is secured. We can't imagine God without perfect moral perfection, or uh, omnipotence, or uh, uh, omnipotence and, uh, and uh, moral perfections. The God could decide just for the best option, and he did it. Smaller evil is certain goodness. Smaller goodness is certain evil if it puts some obstacle for bigger goodness. We can quote from uh, Theodicy. Uh, of Leibniz, wisdom only shows God the best possible exercise of his goodness. After that, the evil that occurs in our world is an inevitable result of the best. Inevitable. There is no other option to have this world without some evils. And which evils? Exactly that evils which are in our world. Leibniz was a mathematician, 
So he also speak, uh, spo uh, speaks about the harmony of a di a divine man. God created the world in the way that it contains the highest number of essences and perfections, highest number, highest possible numbers of good things, good entities. From his essence, God must create the best of possible worlds from his very, uh, very nature. The core of Leibniz's theodicy is following. God could create the world without evil and suffering. The sweat is the world in Slovak. Just if you are not sleeping now. <laughs> God could create a world without evil and suffering. We can imagine this. But this world would be not better as we can, we can think. But worse than the world that he created. So he had to create this actual world with all that sufferings, pains and evil because this, this world, actual world, is better than that, uh, that we can imagine without this, this, this pain or this evil. No one particular evil is not useless or redundant, according to Leibniz. And his final remark, our mind can embrace only part of the universe. We are not able to judge if there is too much or uh, no, enough evil in our world, in our life. And this is the question which is usually uh, put on the table. According to my view, according to my experience, it's too much evil in, in the world. Too much wars, too much violence. But Leibniz replied, uh, our mind can't uh, grasp whole whole universe, whole world actions and causes and consequences. So we are not able to judge if there is too much evil. For, for Leibniz, the best possible world is not without evil, but with certain amount of evil that is inevitable to presence of every requested goodness. So Leibniz solution. If we would like to experience goodness, uh, good things, relations, happiness, we need to take also that level of evil which is our world contains. What's next? Final, com final remarks uh, uh, which is oriented to, to current or uh, Mm, following, uh, following uh, thinking about the theodicy. Can particular theodicy help us? One philosopher uh, wrote in his book about the problem of evil that this book not, is, is not uh, uh, recommended or this is not advice if you are suffering, if you are, uh, if you are ill, if you, are, uh, if you don't have a uh, meaning of your life, if you have uh, uh, said, this is the philosophical theory. <laughs> if you would like to uh, confront your particular evil or uh, unhappiness or, I don't know, illness, please go to the therapist, go to the doctor, go to the somewhere, but not to philosopher. And actually, many philosophers are skeptics about uh, helpfulness or personal uh, helpfulness of these kind of uh, theories. But some of them believe that we have to reconsider by intellectual means the question why the evil is there. And I would like to present in very short time two of them. One skeptic and one, I can say, optimistic or a philosopher who believe that it's valuable to uh, think about uh, origin of the evil. First one is Alvin Plantinga. Alvin Plantinga is very famous American philosopher of religion. He did uh, huge uh, work in 80s, 90s uh, in the scope of philosophy of religion. He taught at Notre Dame University from 80s and uh, started a big movement uh, uh, at that university. Uh, uh, he's very famous ab about his uh, model uh, version of uh, ontological argument or ontological proof of God's existence, 
But concerning to the theory, concerning, concerning to the theory uh, why evil exists in our world, he uh, is skeptical. He is he is still alive. Welcome, uh, Alvin Plantinga wrote. We cannot see why our world, with all its ills, would be better than others we think we can imagine, or what, in any detail, is God's reasons for permitting a given specific and appalling, uh, appalling uh, evil. Not only can we not see this, we can't think of any very good possibilities. And here I must say that most attempts to explain why God permits evil, theodicies as we may call them, strike me as tepid, shallow and ultimately frivolous. Maybe, maybe some of you can find yourself in this position, that this is job of philosophers to create theories and theodicy, as far as you, as you know uh, the theory, uh, doesn't help, can't help. <coughs> another, another option is to think about is uh, think about the theory of uh, evil uh, or present evil in the world more positively. John Hick is the uh, is a, um, example of this approach. John Hick is a, a Englishman. Uh, he's a, a Quaker, finally, I think, and he died uh, five, five years ago, I think. And his uh, theodicy is connected to very beginning one from very ancient era to uh, Irene, to Irenaeus. Remember, Irenaeus was talking about the continuing creation, that creation process is not finished yet. And John Hick, in some way, uh, explored this attitude. Higgs theodicy stress process of soul making, of rising in imitation uh, of God. With a greater degree of perception, one can see that evil we experience through suffering is not ultimately evil, but good, as such is used to make our soul better. Uh, this attitude is also present uh, in whole Christian tradition that sins or evils or illness is in some way helpful for us. Not for maybe for our bodies or for our smile in every, every moment, every single moment of my life, but from, from broader perspective, uh, I am very thankful for many harm situations in my life, for many uh, illness or many, uh, many um, difficult difficulties which I have to, which I had to face uh, faced in my life. And John Hick uh, uh, wrote, one who has attained the goodness to goodness by meeting and eventually mastering temptation and thus by rightly making responsibly choices in concrete situation is good in a richer and more valuable sense than would be one created ab initio in a state either of innocence or of virtue. So, if you are doing something good, if you help somebody uh, in the situation where you had another option, it is more valuable than if you are forced to do good things, if you are in some way uh, don't have uh, uh, another another uh, option. In former case, which is that of the actual moral achievements of mankind, the individual's goodness has within it the strength of temptations overcome and stability based upon uh, accumulation of right choices <coughs> and a positive and responsible character that comes from the investments of costly personal effort. So, evil, according to John Hick, stimulate our personal effort, stimulate our, uh, our power to imitate God who created us. Uh, and my last, and my last uh, 
or sentence or sentences. Uh, suffering exists as a mean of, according to he, and according this line of uh, uh, thinking about the evil. Suffering exists as a mean of spiritual development or potential mean of spiritual development. In other words, God allows suffering so that human souls might grow or develop toward, towards uh, maturation, towards uh, the adult in, uh, in Christianity. And finally, experience and overcome of evil, overcome of temptation, is another mean how to be closer to God. And theologically speaking, God himself showed to, uh, showed to us this way by suffering of his own son. Děkuji vám za uvahy. Uvahu. 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 Uvahu